What's up everybody? Hope you're doing absolutely awesome out there. Thank you so much for coming back to join me for another video. My name is Aaron and today we are talking about the Turin SK40. So you may recall a while back, I did a video about the Turin SK40. A lot of you pointed out in the comments that I was being pretty hard on the grinder and myself going back and rewatching the video and thinking about it, um, I was. I was. I felt like I was too hard on the grinder for its price point. I wasn't keeping that in mind, and I decided, hey, this isn't reflecting how I initially thought it was going to reflect how I felt about the grinder. Now, there are some things with this grinder that I wish were different, but again, keeping in mind that sub $200 price point and how good this thing is overall, I feel like I was being too hard on it. So again, that's why I decided to take that video down and redo this one. So let's dive in. So this is the Turin SK40. It is a 40 millimeter conical burr grinder that comes in at a price point of $199. And you can find it on Espresso Outlet's website. And speaking of Espresso Outlet, I wanna give them a shout out and a thank you for sending me this grinder. Make sure you guys go check out Espresso Outlet, links for all their stuff down in the description. So if you wanna check them out, see what they offer, and maybe pick up some cool products for yourself from them, you can do that. So when looking at the outside of the SK40, you'll see that most of these components are made of metal, which is nice. It's a very robust design. The housing, the stand, um, the base here, the hopper funnel piece here is all made of metal. The catch cup, the grind adjustment, all those things are made of metal and they all seem to be really nice and robust. There are a few other materials on here. Um, there's this wood lid on here, a silicone bellows, and then the grind adjustment dial here is plastic. Now, that is one of the things I do wish was different with this grinder. I wish this was made out of a more robust material. Uh, a plastic gear here being driven by a metal worm gear for the adjustment does leave me a little bit worried that if something was to get bound up in here or if the grinder got knocked or bumped into by something and it happened to hit one of these gears, you could potentially break one of these teeth off. You're gonna find a, an assortment of materials, especially plastic in a lot of grinders in a similar price point. And I do think that the SK40 uses higher quality materials, especially with this thing mostly being metal compared to some of the competitors in that $199 price point. There is a magnet in the base here for the catch cup. Um, I will say definitely not the strongest magnet I've ever uh, experienced in a grinder, but it is nice that they, you know, added that nice little touch of a feature. It's pretty, you know, stable overall. It'll, it'll move around, but if you're, you know, again, not shaking the grinder like that or don't really bump into it too crazy while it's grinding or anything, I don't think you'll have any cause for concern there. So the SK40 is stepless, which is really nice. It's really great for getting espresso dialed in and just making those little finite adjustments to really get you know your particular coffee that you're brewing dialed in that's really nice um, i will say that transitioning between a fine setting for espresso and a coarser setting or a medium you know setting for something like filter or if you're going to do french press or other sorts of brewing methods it does take a little bit of time to sit here and turn this um, dial you know quite a bit to to get it to move it's a little bit of a slow grind adjustment so if you are someone who's gonna be doing multiple types of brew methods on a daily basis where you're going back and forth um, between you know, coarse settings and fine settings, then that could get a little frustrating. It's not you know, that big of a deal. It seems like a silly thing to complain about. Um, but it is something to note. I have been using the SK40 as primarily an espresso grinder. I'm not a big fan of conical burr flavor profiles for filter or other brewing methods, but I do enjoy that um, you know, with certain coffees on espresso. So I've been kind of focusing down on the finer end of this, kind of somewhere in the two to like three and a half, four range is where I found this to be effective for the coffees that I'm brewing on espresso. Um, obviously your you know, uh, experience may change with that depending on what type of coffees you're brewing, um, what roast level, that sort of thing. But all in all, um, it's done a very good job for me in that range with some more kind of medium to lighter roasted espressos, which is typically what I prefer. The SK40 was designed to be a single dose grinder. So as you can see, there's a very small little metal hopper up here or funnel, um, and obviously the bellows and the lid here. And so um, with the bellows, this is a very low retention grinder. I've, I've seen very consistent low retention results of like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, as long as you're using the bellows. If you're not using the bellows, especially if you're grinding finer for espresso, um, it does have a you know fair amount of retention as do a lot of grinders out there. So. Having the bellows is fantastic, that it comes with it is great. You can just hit that real quick towards the end of your grind and get everything out of the grind chamber and not have an issue with retention at all. Another nice thing about the SK40 is that it's really easy to take apart and clean. Um, it only really needs basically two tools if you wanna take it apart. So real quick, we'll go ahead and kind of dismantle this and talk about the components. So obviously you've got the lid here, 
You've got the silicone bellows, which comes off very easily just like that. You've got your metal funnel here, and all this has right here is a little thumb screw that you can remove, and then the metal funnel comes off. And after that, all you need to do is remove the grind adjustment auger, which is this piece up here. And that just requires a Phillips screwdriver to take this off right here. Shouldn't be a ton of pressure to get that out. And honestly, you may not even really have to take this off to pull the um, to pull the uh, top of the grind chamber off and pull the burr out here. I just did it because it makes it a little easier to spin by hand instead of spinning it all the way out until you get to a point where you can remove it. So once you get the grind adjuster off, you will notice you've got your outer or uh, fixed burr, stationary burr, whatever you'd like to call it in here. It's attached to the bottom of the grind adjustment, and that reveals inside here the cone burr, which again is an eight-sided or octagonal stainless steel cone burr. With a small Allen wrench, you can unbolt these four screws here and remove the grind's exit chute, which will reveal the declumper and you know the exit of the grind chamber. So when you're doing your regular cleaning on this, you can easily pull that off, pull the declumper out, clean all that stuff up, and uh, you know be good to go and have a nice clean grinder. Another thing with the SK40 is that it's reasonably quiet. When you have it turned on and running with no beans in it, it's really not that bad. Pull up a decibel meter here on my phone so you can see. So right around 68 decibels when it's not grinding, and let's find out what it sounds like and how loud it is when it is grinding. I do recommend RDT with this grinder. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of an ionizer or plasma generator or anything like that, and with lighter roasted coffees, um, it can be a little bit messy. So not too bad, about 85 or so, 86 is the max decibel there, which is a little loud, but it's not too bad, especially compared to some other grinders I've heard. And this also was a pretty dense, lightly roasted coffee. So just for your information there, if you're curious how loud it is, Mm, that smells really good. I've not really had any sort of major issue with this grinder stalling. I did have a couple times in a row that it stalled when I was really you know, down in the fine range around two or two and a half with an incredibly, incredibly light roasted coffee. Um, and in that scenario, I don't really blame the grinder. The coffee was not good quality. It was way too lightly roasted and it, it was just not a good bean at all. At the same grind setting around two and a half, you know, three, that sort of thing for, for espresso, I've had no issues with this thing stalling with a well roasted, good quality, you know, light roasted coffee. So I don't think there's any cause for concern there with stalling, um, but I did want to let you know, I, I did have that happen, but again, it was more than likely the cause, you know, the cause of that was just not a good quality coffee and not a good quality roast. So um, other than that, I have not had a single issue with this thing stalling and it's performed like a champ, you know, since I got it. So as one might assume by the name SK40, this grinder has a 40 millimeter conical burr set. It's a stainless steel eight-sided or octagonal conical burr. It has a 150 watt motor that spins at 650 RPM unloaded and 400 RPM when you have beans in it grinding, according to Espresso Outlet's website. As far as I know, this is sort of an updated or newer version of this burr set that's available now in the SK40 and the SD40, which is sort of the sibling grinder to this that you can also find on Espresso Outlet's website. It does produce a very nice sort of traditional style you know, textured, syrupy, good sweetness kind of style of shot. Even though I mainly do lighter and, you know, medium light roasted stuff, um, it still performs very well uh, on espresso with those types of coffees. And I can see how with a more medium to darker roasted coffee and more of that, again, traditional style espresso shot, that this thing would do very, very well for that. For filter coffee, again, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of conical burr flavor profiles for filter brewing, um, but it does produce a decent cup. So if you're somebody that's not quite as much of a stickler for, you know, clarity and complexity and things like that with, you know, filter brews or you're brewing again, medium to darker roasted coffees in that style of brew method, filter or AeroPress or, you know, French press, whatever you may be brewing, then I think this guy would do the job perfectly fine for you. Um, I prefer typically lighter roasted stuff that's got, you know, very distinct characteristics and complexity. And I like the flavor separation and the cleanliness um, and the, um, you know, level of acidity and again, complexity and clarity that flat burrs provide um, for those types of filter brews and those types of coffees. So again, for me, this hasn't been, you know, great on filter, but that is 
all just personal preference. Uh, everybody has different taste preferences out there when it comes to um, coffee, you know, and so it just depends on what you're into and what you like. Um, I have done a couple of French press brews using this and I have actually used the Next Level Pulsar uh, with this grinder and got really good results. So for immersion brewing, again, especially with more of a medium, you know, medium to darker roasted coffee, um, this guy does a really good job. I'm just personally not a big fan of it on filter like traditional V60 or the Aurea or something like that. Uh, I haven't found it to be all that great for what I prefer, but you know, that's, that's just personal preference. So I think the only thing left to do at this point is pull a shot, see how this thing tastes and talk about my final thoughts. So for this shot we're gonna pull, we are using 18 grams of a really nice honey processed El Salvador from my friends over at Mythical Coffee. It smells fantastic. Grind looks really good. I had this at um, grind setting three. I found with this particular coffee, like an 18 in, 55 out, so a little bit of a longer shot. Uh, works really well for this coffee and just produces a really nice flavor profile. So we're gonna give that a go and uh, see how it tastes. Those of you with a keen eye will probably see that I have a Turin auto tamper here and I'll have a video on that coming soon, but just know I really like it. Well, that's not good. That grind was too fine. So with this coffee, setting three, this grind, that was too fine. I only got about 17 grams out in 30 seconds. So obviously first couple of shots there didn't go as planned. First shot, way too fine. I only got like 17 grams out in 30 seconds, so no good there. Second shot would have been a good you know, ratio at 18 in, 36 out, which is what I got in 30 seconds. Um, if you were wanting to lean more towards a traditional style, you know, one to two ratio shot. With this particular coffee though, it definitely benefits from a longer shot. Like I said, again, 18 in, 55 out is what I typically target with this particular coffee. So I did have to loosen up the grind a little bit more and I'm sitting right at setting four right now. And I just got um, in 30 seconds, again, 18 in, I got 52.7 grams out. So pretty darn close. I'm not gonna make any more adjustments to this right now. Um, we're gonna see how this tastes. Mm. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh. The texture is really good. It's nice and syrupy, even with a longer shot. It's still got like nice, good body to it. Right off the initial sip, like a nice lemony, sort of like lemon meringue kind of flavor. Good sort of like stone fruit, deep like dark cherry, kind of middle flavor notes, and then a finish of like sort of a smooth kind of velvety, dark chocolate maybe. Little, little bit of sweetness, kind of like in between like dark and milk chocolate, if you will. That is very, very tasty. This is a great grinder, especially at only $199. So I think if you're in the market for something like this, your budget is in that, you know, $199 range, you know, $150 to $250, let's say. I think that the SK40 is definitely a grinder that is worth checking out, looking at. I, I recommend this grinder at this price point, I think, considering the build quality compared to some other grinders in the same price point and the overall performance, and the taste you're getting in the cup, especially if you're gonna be using this primarily as an espresso grinder, I don't think you can go wrong with this grinder. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to redo this video and revisit this, because again, I did feel like at the time of filming this original video I did with this grinder, I wasn't you know, thinking about the price point and I was really sort of nitpicking some of the things that I didn't like about the grinder and I didn't feel like I talked enough about the good things of this grinder in that price point. And I definitely wanted to do this grinder justice and be you know, fair and do a good fair review. So aside again from the, some of the little things that I don't care for with this grinder, which isn't much, I think it's a great buy. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Take care. Ooh.